Hello, I'm Karma Kitai, and I am your host for A Livelihood, New Adventures as We Age. On A Livelihood, I invite guests who are over age 50 who have started some new adventure in their lives. So today I'm going to introduce you to Alexandra Spingarn, who is an artist who has recently published and produced her own book based on her paintings. So we'll be hearing about that. So welcome. Thank you. <laughs> and we're going to want to hear about the book and how it all came about. So I think you told me that when your granddaughter was born, Matilda, yes. and she was living in London at the time, right? And still does. And still does. That you wanted to find a way to kind of bring her home to Brookline with That's you. Right. Yeah. When my son, who grew up in Brookline, and his wife visit, they used to visit every year with the baby. And when they came, and she was three and a half, she was painting in my studio. And we have an old music box that my children played with, where you wind it up and a little clown dances in the box. And she loved it. And so she was playing uh -huh. with the box and drawing. And after they left, I missed her so much, and I'm sure all, everyone who has grandchildren understands that pull when you miss them. Um, and I decided if I painted her, I could bring her back to me, and I would mm -hmm. have her with me. And so I started... <laughs> so that was your fantasy. That huh? was my fantasy. <laughs> so I decided I wanted to make a series of paintings, and it was about childhood imagination, and I had her painting... Um, uh, with the music box and then have him come out of the box and interact with her as a child of three might fantasize about that. Mm -hmm. And so I created a series of paintings about this. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I um, decided to make it into a book. But even before that, a year before that, uh, the Newton Free Library chose me for... And this is in Massachusetts. In Massachusetts, in Newton, Massachusetts. It's the largest library in Massachusetts, too. And uh, it's quite an incredible building. And uh, they chose me for the month of December because they loved the theme of the clowns and the children and the music uh -huh. box. And they thought it would be a very, very uh, cheerful topic for December where you have Christmas and Hanukkah. And, uh -huh. and so I had the exhibit this past December. And I sent Matilda a book, and of course, I sent them a couple of books, and she loved it. Mm -hmm. And then of this past Easter, they came to visit, and we actually sat down together and read the book together, because she's just starting to read, so she could actually read the words. Oh, and so uh, right. it was really a lot of fun for me. Yeah. So this is the first time you've really done a children's book, right? The very first time. And. Mm -hmm. um, as a young woman, I was trained as an, as an artist, as a painter in New York at the Art Students League, where I worked for years with Harry Sternberg and Arnold Blanche. And then I, I went to Pratt Institute in New York. They had a Pratt Center for Contemporary Printmaking. Mm -hmm. This is all in the early 60s. And I worked there for five years, learning lithography. And then eventually, I was a litho printer. Mm -hmm. And then and moved we to have Boston. A, one or two pictures, I think, that we can put up on the screen of your early of the early days lithographs. Doing yeah. Lithographs. Huh? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, eventually, uh, we moved there. That's an early lithograph. Mm -hmm. um, my work was much more surreal at that time mm -hmm. uh, than a children's than subject. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But. Um, we moved to Boston, to Cambridge, and then Brookline. And uh, during the years when my children were, you know, in the middle years, I became a single parent, and I just devoted all my time to them. Mm -hmm. And then when they so are yeah. you saying that during those years you really weren't were not doing producing much artwork? Not. I certainly more or less I wasn't really painting. I started working at the museum school uh, working, trying to make lithographs there, and found the shop there rather limited. So then I went to Impressions, where I had a professional printer that I worked with for about 10 years. I made mm. a series 
of lithographs with him. And in fact, that lithograph you had up there, when, which is called When Things of the Spirit Come First, um, mm -hmm. was printed by Paul McGuire. That was a two-color lithograph. Uh -huh. um, so he's a, a printer. Yes, yeah. he's a, a professional litho printer, which I was when I was in my early mid-twenties. But by the time um, he was printing for me, uh, in other words, to, to be a professional printer, you have to be printing every day mm. and be in very, very good shape. Uh, it's, a, it's an enormous amount of work. Hmm. And Is that I the case for lithography in particular or any kind yes. of printing? No, no, no. I mean, lithography in particular is addition printing, where every print has to be identical, and it all mm. has to be printed in one run. So like in one, mm. maybe three days, 30 prints would be produced or, mm -hmm. or less. Mm -hmm. And that's quite an athletic feat <laughs> to roll the ink on the stones. And you mm. know, it, it's a lot of so work. So that's the part that the printer would do then. That's what the printer does. And I was so a you printer. So create, you yeah. created the image, but then the printer would do the mechanics of. That's right. I gave oh, it yeah. over to him because mm -hmm. I was no longer uh, as young as I was, or as an, you know, I was busy with children, and I, I couldn't mm -hmm. put in the hours I did as a printer anymore. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm curious about it because I think I might have told you that I just recently took a class on yeah. mono printing. Yeah, that's very different. Right. Because that's just one print, one, one print. take. Yeah, yeah. But uh, litho printing uh, historically is uh, addition printing, where where all the prints I didn't are exactly realize have to they be have to be identical. Huh. Yes, and uh, mm. it's very different from even etching and aqua tinting because you could do one print, put the plate away, and five years later you could do another print. But with lithography, it has to all be printed at once because it's on a stone, mm -hmm. you know, a three, four hundred pound stone that you print it, the addition is done, and then the stone is ground down for the next edition to be printed by someone else. Oh, okay. So you have to release those stones. You can't mm -hmm. just save it for your one I image. See. Right. And then also with lithography, you have one um, stone for each color. So if it's a two color print or a four color print, mm. it's four stones. Mm -hmm. And all that has to be done, it all has to be identical, it all has to be in uh -huh. registration. Okay. It's a very mm. special field, yeah. and it's something I loved doing very much. Uh -huh. Is that something you imagine you'd get back to doing now? Well, I'd love to um, make more images on stones, but I, I will never print my You'll own You'll never stones do the stones. printing? No, it's much too rigorous, and mm -hmm. um, it's nothing I could do at this stage of my life. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but when mm -hmm. I was a young woman, I did that, and I loved it. Yeah. It was a lot yeah. of fun. So just to come back to your book for a moment, yes. um, what was it like for you to publish a book? Well, it was, it was a some, lot of fun. A new adventure for you, huh? Yes, it was a lot of fun because, um, you know, I had spent time, uh, when my kids went off to college, I went back to school and I got a degree. Mm -hmm. I got my undergraduate degree in classics and then I went on and did a master's in art history. And I did a lot of studying of books. And, and so that was also on my mind of mm -hmm. the Renaissance images of early uh, printing. Mm -hmm. So it was sort of fun. Also, this uh, was done all by me on the computer. So I had to use... You mean the, the writing or...? Well, the writing and... You're putting uh, together the whole package. Getting the images uh, mm -hmm. off of uh, a disc and then uh, placing them. Mm, and deciding okay. how it would be designed and how it would be uh, the frontispiece and all mm -hmm. of it was, I, yeah. I designed it. That's I did the, the whole beauty thing. of self-publishing. That's right? right. That you have complete control over it. And I even did the jacket uh, mm -hmm. covers and the front and the back. So it was like making a print mm -hmm. in a way because <laughs> I was, you know, um, working again in producing a multiple. Mm -hmm. Because then these get printed, and then you have a box comes with 30 of them, and they're all identical, and, uh -huh. and I did it. And so in a way, mm -hmm. it, get, it brought me back to something that I really love to do, which is making images, uh -huh. you know. And yeah. 
and making prints is very much like this. Uh huh. You know, well, in interesting. A way. Yeah. So, what about the the story? What was it like for you to to write the story? To write a children's story because that's not something that you've done before, right? That's right. But I've read a lot of children's books because I raised my own two sons. And um, as a child, my father used to bring me beautiful books mm. when I lived in New York. And, and uh, we used to read beautiful books, beautifully illustrated books. Oh. Um, and um, it was frustrating because when I was reading to Matilda, there weren't so many great books. I mean, oh, really? yeah, there are I mean, very few books. artists today actually illustrate children's books. Children's books oh. are made by professional children's illustrators, and most of them are rather oh. commercial, I think, except oh. for the classic ones like uh, Maurice Sendak's books oh, right. I was or say, yeah. Make Way for Ducklings, you know, the ones I love that I've mm -hmm. given to mm -hmm. Matilda and to her brother Orlando. Mm. And then I have another little grandson, Julian, in Brooklyn, and I get him books. But mm -hmm. I go back to the books that were made many years ago. Yeah. Now, Maurice Sendak, when did he write those books that we probably all read? Yeah, to where, our the, where the, where the wild, wild things, things are, are and all yeah. that. that. That was all in the 60s. <coughs> no, when our kids were babies, like in the early 70s, mm -hmm. those <coughs> books came out, I believe. Now, did he illustrate that book? I think he did. Mm -hmm. I mean, I might I be wrong, but I'm pretty sure he wrote them and illustrated them. Uh -huh. I mean, that was his gift, mm -hmm. very talented. Mm -hmm. He's a wonderful illustrator. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so, do you expect you're going to do another children's book? Well, I, I would like to. In fact, I was thinking of maybe doing another, uh, some kind of new story for my little Julian, who's, he loves playing with trains. So he's the son of your He's the son, son of my, uh, uh, he's the, Little son of my of my son Jason, who lives in Brooklyn, New York. Mm -hmm. He's married. Sabrina is an artist, and I'd love to do something about him. He's very bright, and he's a beautiful child, and I think it would be interesting to do something mm -hmm. about him. Yeah. Um, and I'm also interested now in painting because I, I'm I'm beginning to think about painting portraits of people. Mm -hmm. um, I've gotten interested in that. And, uh, Is, that's not something that you did in the past? No, I've, I never really did very much of that. And it's something I'd, I'd sort of like to do while I still can. You know, while I still have the dexterity in my hands. I mean, uh -huh. you know, I'm going to be 70 next year, so, uh -huh. I mean, in half a year. And, and I know from my friends who are now in their 80s that you don't keep that dexterity forever. The arthritis and all kinds of problems. Mm -hmm. can make it very difficult to continue. So I want to mm -hmm. do as much as I can now, mm -hmm. yeah. you know. And uh, So what, what would you say has been the subject, subjects that you have painted in the past? Well, um, as a young person, I was, my teacher Harry Sternberg very much was a message teacher, and uh, this was at the Art Students League. And he would say to us, um, not what you are painting, but why you are painting. Mm -hmm. What is it that you want to say? Mm -hmm. What are you trying to convey? Okay. And he would send us all over New York, the city, go on the subways, go in the parks, go everywhere, and draw everything in sketchbooks. Draw everything you see. Because mm -hmm. you, what are you interested in? What is it you are trying to say about the world? You know, that was, mm. he was a social realist himself in the 30s and 40s, and, mm -hmm. and uh, he was a wonderful painter. And that was how I was trained to mm -hmm. behave, you know, to behave as an artist. So I became very involved with saying, you know, as a young person, saying not only about, I loved uh, painting mothers and children, and the children and mothers weren't always the happiest <laughs> mothers and children. Because I was also very message, you know, I was trying to show the downside of motherhood as well as the upside. Oh, okay, but those were not really portraits of no. particular people. No, no, no. It they was were more, more the from message. imagination. Yeah, uh -huh. It was more message of trying to show mm -hmm. the, the human condition. The human mm. condition of the city, uh -huh. of the bums on the subway, of the, mm. the all the 
the downside of the city as well as the upside of the city. Mm -hmm. I did lots of paintings of shops in Greenwich Village, of the fish stores, of mm -hmm. you know old ladies on the subway with their all their bags and all kinds of stuff like that. And mm -hmm. I sold many, many paintings. I, I showed in Provincetown for over 17 years at a mm -hmm. gallery, the Paul Kessler Gallery. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I had, I, was, I had quite a career as a young artist. Mm -hmm. um, when you say young artist, you mean in, 20s well, and 30s? Yeah, no, no. By the time uh, when I moved to Boston, I was 26. Mm -hmm. So it was all before I was 26. Oh, a really I had young my artist. Yeah, I had my first show when I was um, 19. Oh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was married at 23, almost 23, 22 and a half. Mm -hmm. So this all happened to me very, very young. Oh. You know, I, mm -hmm. um, I mm -hmm. wrote a book uh, a number of years ago now called women who could and did. And I interviewed women, some of them were artists, they were all over age 65. Yeah. And I interviewed an artist named Maud Morgan. Oh yes, I did know. Did you know her? Yes. Yeah. And of course she was, she was painting into her 90s. I yes, think. that's right. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, well, Titian made one of his greatest paintings, which is in Venice. Um, when he was 98 years old, and it mm -hmm. was a self-portrait. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So many great artists did live to be very old. Right, yeah. um, and of course a lot of people start doing artwork when they're, when they're older. in their older years. That's so true. I started yeah. doing artwork um, maybe about three years ago. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which, um, you know, of course I come from a very different perspective from you who, who's been yeah. trained as an artist. And yeah practice for so many years. But, well, what I did was uh, I had this passion when I was very young, like when I was 17 I graduated from high school, and I really wanted to be a painter. Mm -hmm. And of course it was in the early 60s, in 61, when so many artists and young people were rebelling against the, 50, the very conservative 50s. Mm -hmm. And um, so I in many ways rejected my parent, my father was a physician in Manhattan and was a very, came from a very academic family. They all went to Columbia University and, and I didn't want to do that. I just wanted to be a mm -hmm. painter, which was, you know, which was typical of that time. Mm -hmm. um, but not, not so acceptable in your family? No, well, my, my parents really loved the arts and so they you know, exposed I, you to the arts a lot. Very much. And uh, as a child, I, I studied ballet for many, many years and, and uh, paint. I didn't study painting, but I did a lot of painting it on my own. And I was sort of the class artist in elementary school and in high school. Mm -hmm. I then started to go to the Art Students League mm -hmm. and study painting formally. Mm -hmm. um, and I went to Woodstock for two summers. and spent four months up there painting at the Art Students League. and mm -hmm. So I had a lot of exposure to the arts. And, right. But um, no, the point I wanted to make is that I discovered academics in my 50s mm. when I went back to school and went to Harvard. Right. right. Whereas in my, in my teens and early 20s, I, I just... You weren't interested in I went to the art. I went to the new school at night and took a few courses. Mm -hmm. But I, I couldn't uh, handle all the academic work, mm -hmm. the, the math and science and um, language that was required of you in college. Mm -hmm. However, but once yeah. you went back to school in your 50s, I it, had to it do was it. different? I had to do language. I had to mm -hmm. do math, statistics. Did you find it was more com comprehensible for you to do it when you were older? I think it was. I was more ready to sit down and concentrate and really do it. And uh -huh. I, and I, when I did um, all my liberal arts courses in literature and classics and um, history, I found I could get A's. I was very excited to see that that I had what it took, you know, <laughs> to do well. I, I graduated right. with honors. Uh -huh. um, so I was very proud of myself that I could. Yeah. I so could are you that. saying that during your twenties, thirties, forties, you know, you 
you didn't see yourself as being much of an academic, that's right, academically inclined. That's right, person. Huh? Yeah, and also, uh -huh. um, don't forget. Well, in my 40, uh, late thirties and forties, I was a single parent, and I was very preoccupied with the education of my children. Uh -huh. But I became my son Jason's Latin tutor, and oh. when he was at Park School, in uh, he went there in sixth grade, and he did two years of Latin in one year, and every morning. <laughs> I was his Latin coach, his Latin tutor, and by doing that, I said, gee, you know, I'd like to learn this. I'd like to learn about uh, early Rome and Roman architecture, mm -hmm. and I'd like to So you to mean you hadn't really studied Latin? I had never, I had never gone to college. I didn't study, uh, you know, early civilizations. I, mm -hmm. I, I really didn't know that much about Mm -hmm. Ancient Greece and uh -huh. you know all the and the the art of ancient uh -huh. Greece. And so your children got really me excited. Got you excited about learning, huh? That's right. And mm -hmm. by parenting them and seeing their education, it really got me very excited about going back mm -hmm. to school and wishing I had their advantages mm -hmm. because I I went to a public school um, in New York where. I didn't have the opportunities to learn languages as they did. Mm. You know. Well, so, and I think they teach languages differently now. Yes, they do. Than when you and I were in school. And earlier, so mm -hmm. they and they mm -hmm. learn it. And my kids both went to Hebrew school, so they were learning Hebrew in fourth grade and fifth grade and sixth grade. And mm -hmm. It helped develop their brains and help them academically, I think. Mm. It was uh, through parenting, mm -hmm. I think I found a lot of more self-confidence mm. than I had as a young adult where my, my parents were very preoccupied with their med the medical practice and mm -hmm. my brother and I. Was your mother I, also involved in the medical practice? She ran it. She uh -huh. was the medical administrator, basically, yeah. and she well, ran the You told me your mother is, what, 100 years old? My mother will be 100 years old December 8th. Uh -huh. and, and she moved up here when she was still cooking, 90. huh? <laughs> well, okay. she's not cooking. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean cooking. She's still living, yeah. yeah but yeah. she is living in senior housing at Spring House in Jamaica mm -hmm. Plain and been very, very happy there now for 10 years. So I'm very proud of her, and I've spent a mm -hmm. lot of time helping her. And But she's helped me a great deal. She's taught me a great deal about what it's like to get older and how to mm -hmm. live with discipline. How to age gracefully. Huh? That's right. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. So yeah. it's been a good life. Uh -huh. And it's still going. Huh? That's right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So you've got all these generations that you're involved with. Huh? That's true. Your grandchildren and your children. And my mother. Your mother. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. And my peers, my friends who are... Uh -huh. Some older than me, some younger than me. So we, but I think that this is the best time of life for me, mm -hmm. absolutely. Because I mm -hmm. think for me, adolescence was very, very traumatic, very difficult. Mm. Yeah. In what way? I don't know why, but it was. It was very mm -hmm. difficult for me. Even though you were practicing your art work? At yes, that time. but it's, I think adolescence is turbulent. With, mm -hmm. for young people, some young people, some mm -hmm. depends. I mean, my children right. didn't have a difficult adolescence, but I mm -hmm. did. Uh -huh. And as I got older, my life became much more ordered and much, I became much happier. And mm -hmm. I'd say this, this period of my 60s was probably the happiest time of my life. Mm -hmm. I mean... What do you think made it the happiest time in your life? Well, I've seen my children grow up to be fine, members of society, both doing very well. Mm -hmm. I now see grandchildren who are beautiful and growing. So it's an, it's an affirmation or reaffirmation of mm -hmm. all the work I did 40 years ago when I gave birth to them and took care of them. Uh -huh. And I see my mother, I'm taking care of her, and I see how she's thriving mm -hmm. and doing so well here. So uh -huh. it makes me feel very good <laughs> that I've been yeah. able to accomplish all this. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's one of the reasons that I decided to do this television show. Yeah. Because I think we have a different perspective, a lot of us, about aging, different from, you know, maybe our parents or certainly our grandparents' generation. Because people are living longer and that's true. more healthily, yeah. yes. more active, and starting new things. So just as you're 
here today talking about your book and having, you know, just embarked on this project of putting it all together yourself. Yes. You know, which isn't something probably that our parents would have been able to do. Of course, we didn't have computers then. <laughs> That's true. Um, it would have but, been much more difficult. Yeah, Without yeah. computers, I would have had to go to a printer, I would have had to go to a publisher and convince them that this was worth making a book of. Mm -hmm. And I also would have had to have a photographer take all the pictures for me. Mm -hmm. And I mean, years ago, you'd have to have slides made of all your paintings. Mm -hmm. And it was much more complicated to yeah, show your work. Much more cumbersome. Yep. Yeah, yeah, so computers have made it much easier for us, mm -hmm. for yeah. everyone. Yeah. So you say that you're interested in maybe starting to do portraits of people. Yes. Say, say more about that. Well, I'm fascinated now uh, more with the human face and the character in, the human, in people. Mm -hmm. And I would like to be able to convey that, you know, because... You know, I've spent years now, more than 10 years, studying Renaissance art and the whole history of art. And mm -hmm. so many great artists had this incredible facility of capturing the essence of a person. Mm -hmm. And I would like to try to do that. I mean, oh. while I still have my hands that work. Your agility. <laughs> my agility. Right. I would like to try to capture that. I mean, I'd love to make some, pa I'd love to do a painting of my mother at the age she is, yeah. um, and mm -hmm. maybe some of her friends. Now, would she be willing to sit for you, do you think? Sure, she would love it. No, I, I would just do maybe a few sketches, uh, sketches maybe some photographs, and I mean, mm -hmm. I'm around her a lot, so it's in my mind, you know. Mm -hmm. It would be very interesting to do that. Right. Now, so yeah. many great artists have done some wonderful self-portraits. Is That's that something true. that you could see yourself doing? I mean, when I was younger, I did more, um, not exactly self-portraits, but a lot of the young women I painted looked a little bit like me, <laughs> which I think artists tend to do. They, they know their own faces so well, so they repeat uh -huh. them. Uh -huh. um, I'm not that interested in actually doing a, a real self-portrait of myself, uh -huh. but maybe I, maybe I will. Uh -huh. But, but lately, I've been doing these pictures of my grandchildren and of my daughter-in-law, and I'd like to uh, maybe do... Someone said something to me, how come I don't do any paintings of men? Oh. But the clown, Pierrot, is a man. Oh, that's a male figure. A male uh -huh. figure, although mm -hmm. he is a clown. But um, I would like to maybe try to attempt that, too. I mean, when mm -hmm. I was in my earlier years, I did a lot of pictures of men, too. Mm -hmm. So it's just recently I haven't been doing that, but I'd like to, to do some right. of that. Yeah. Okay, so before we wrap up in a minute, um, I just want to make sure that people know how they might get your book. Oh, yes. So? Well, first of all, the people who printed it and published it for me, it's called blurb, B-L-U-R-B dot com. So you can always go to that and buy the book. Mm -hmm. Or you can go to Amazon.com, and then I have a shop on Etsy, E-T-S-Y.com, mm -hmm. with my paintings and the book and drawings. Okay. And then locally, the uh, Children's Bookstore has it, and the Harvard Bookstore has it, and also the Brookline Booksmith. Okay, locally around Brookline, right, Boston area. Right, in Brookline and yeah. Cambridge. Mm -hmm. And then in New York, in Brooklyn, it's at a bookstore there mm -hmm. where my son uh, lives. So. Okay, and what about at your website? Oh, and my website is uh -huh. alexandraspingarn.com. Com. Okay. You can see all the paintings and the book, mm -hmm. and um, it's actually a lot of fun to, to make a website. That's another Oh, another adventure. A lot, uh, another big project that takes <laughs> many hours, I'm I sure know, you know. I know. Uh, okay, oh, well, computer. thank you so much for coming. And very I welcome. really am delighted to that you gave me a copy of this, this lovely yes, book. and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, well, join me next time when we will have a new guest.